Hey everyone, my name is Jennifer and welcome to a Vintage Vanity. I'm super excited for today's video because, well, you guys are here. And today we are going to be doing not one, not two, but three different hair tutorials all styled around a pair of glasses. Before we get right to it, it is that time in the video where we share the love, where I share with you guys a YouTuber that I really enjoy and think you will like as well. You will always find the link to their channel in the description box and on the screen. So you can go check them out, of course, when you're done watching this video. This week, we are going to be sharing the love with Liz Von Villas. I really enjoy her content. I also am slightly jealous that she has the planning ability to sew a capsule wardrobe. I'm obsessed. So yes, you're going to find a bunch of really great sewing tutorials and you'll find some hair tutorials there as well, but I think you're going to love her. So be sure to check her out. You guys know how much I have embraced my bad eyesight by wearing fun glasses. Now the thing is, I love to change out my glasses all the time, so it's really important for me to find frames that are fairly inexpensive. And now that I wear bifocals, those glasses can get super expensive, which is why I love to shop for my glasses online. Now when Firmu reached out to me wanting to sponsor a video, I was so excited because they do great fun glasses at a really affordable price. I'm gonna be leaving all their information in the description box below, including the frames that are featured in this video. But I didn't want to just unbox and review the glasses. I wanted to do something really fun, which is when I came up with the idea of styling my hair around my glasses. So let's go style up some cute frames. I think you guys might agree that these glasses kind of want to go out on a night on the town, right? <laughs> I absolutely love the gems. I love the pink. It's a very subtle pink in the frame, and the frame is a little bit translucent, and it is more of a modern take on that classic cat eye. And one of the things that I really like about these is that the glasses section of it are quite big because sometimes with the smaller cat eyes they can cut you at a weird point in your eye and if you're like me and you have smaller eyes sometimes that can make them look even smaller so sometimes I want that wide eye look and a style like these do that for me. For this frame I thought it would be fun to do that kind of classic wave style that I do so let's go ahead and get started. For all of these looks, I did an overnight wet set using my foam rollers, and I used both my one and a half inch and one inch foam rollers. Everything on top was rolled back, and everything on the sides and back were rolled under. For my setting lotion, I used one of my favorites, Jane Carter Solutions Wrap and Roll. And now I'm simply going to unroll everything. If you want more information on how to do a foam roller overnight wet set, Go ahead and check out my video that you'll see here and in the description. Now that the curls are released and looking oh so surely temple, I'm going to use my seven row Denman brush and I am just going to brush, brush, brush them out. Now I will also leave a link here and in the description on my video on a foam roller set brush out because sometimes the first time can be a little scary. Now that the curls are a little more tame, I'm gonna go ahead and take my pomade. I am currently using a water-based pomade, and I'm gonna take a little bit of that. Now I use a water-based pomade because my hair is a little bit on, I wanna say thinner, but finer side of things. So if you have a very thick and more frizz prone hair, I would look at more of a wax-based pomade because it'll help to weigh the hair down just a little bit more. I always start at the bottom because you definitely don't want to put too much pomade right up the top because then that'll look like your hair is greasy. That is not a look we're going for today. Now we're going to ruin all the smoothness we created by doing a little bit of controlled chaos with my backcombing brush. My hair has already fallen into the part that it prefers, so all I'm going to do is start by backcombing right at the part. And since I want to create both a volume and height, I'm going to back comb from about halfway down the hair strand to the scalp. 
And you want to make sure you're backcombing in only one direction. If you're doing the seesaw motion, you will be breaking your hair. You can also at this time add some hairspray of your choice as this will help to hold in that backcombing. And I'm going to backcomb all the way just past my temple. Then we'll flip it over and then we'll do the same thing on this side. You don't want all the volume on the front and the back of your head flat. So you're going to take that back section and you're going to backcomb it as well. And now, while you're asking yourself, why in the world did you tune in to me for a hair tutorial, we are going to comb all of this down and actually form it into the style that we want. Because all this backcombing is going to give us a nice base that will give us volume, fullness, and style. So now what I'm going to do working at my part is I'm going to take again that backcombing brush and I'm going to lightly brush over the hair. So you don't want to go into it and start combing through the backcombing. You just want to basically brush the outside of the hair. And I'm just holding on to it because then I'm not pulling down the height. The height kind of stays right there. See how it's giving us that nice bit of volume right there? And then see how my hair is starting to do this right here? It's kind of um, bumping forward on its own. That's telling me that I can create a wave right there. So I'm just going to karate chop it and actually just start kind of pushing into the hair. You can even use the back of your comb or brush as well. And because this is an overnight wet set, the, the chances of you brushing any of this curl or wave out is very, very little. And just gonna karate chop it till my waves come back. There, see that starting to come in? So once you have something you like, uh, you're going to take these long duck bill clips and I will try to place a link to um, what I use in the description box below for you if you don't have it. Um, and I'm just going to place that right into the wave because essentially what that's going to do is it's going to hold it in place while we're combing the rest of it and it's also going to help strengthen the wave. Now if you only have these little guys no problem at all you're just gonna do the same thing you'll just need to line them up I really like the fullness of the curl down here so I'm actually going to leave this as my one wave and then I'm going to control the curl down here now here's the thing to remember is that there is a difference between fluff and frizz frizz basically looks frizzy and it looks kind of all over the place fluff is kind of a natural soft cloud of curls if that makes sense so I'm not gonna work to like smooth all of this out and make it look perfect what I'm doing is I'm taking away the frizz and then also trying to leave the fluff and volume of the hair. So I'm just grabbing like small sections of the hair and brushing it up against my hand. That will help to smooth it out. You can see we're getting like a nice little curl there. Let's get on up close on that so you can hopefully see that a little bit better. Taking that section. See how it looks straight and like there's no curl left? Oh, there's curl there. Just need to let it go. Let it go. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my hairspray and I'm gonna spray the exterior of the hair because you can still see we've got like some little like frizziness down here. And then I'm just going to put my hand on it while it's still damp. And that will kind of meld some of that frizziness down. And then don't forget to hairspray the underside of your hair. Because a lot of times what happens is because that's sitting right up against your neck. And I don't know, I'm a little hot and sweaty some places right now. Um, when it sits against your neck, it will start to fall over time. So then you end up having 
all this hairsprayed hair here that's still in place and then the stuff that's next to your neck it starts drooping so you always want to make sure you're like doing a 360 with your hairspray so we're basically going to replicate that method kind of over here as well but the first thing we're going to deal with is um we can see with that height the back combing gave us it gave me a little bit of a swoop 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 um and i'm going to hold on to that while i brush down on the hair and i'm going to kind of keep brushing more towards the back as well so i can get that looking really smooth that's why I love these back combing brushes with the rat tail because um, it really helps to kind of like style it and form the hair. And then I basically I'm combing it down, right? And now when it's down, I'm going to push it up. And then using the rat tail portion of my comb, I find that wave again. Because to me, this is one of my most important ones. I'm going to go from the back here with my long clip. And then I'm going to go from the front with my long clip. And we're going to leave those guys to marinate in their wave thoughts. And then I'm going to hold on to this hair and I'm going to brush down and basically do the same thing. find my second wave and it is going to look the curls are going to look a little bit off right now but we're going to fix that in just a little bit and i'm going to do the same thing with calming the curls over on this side okay and now i'm going to take out my lower clips and i still have my bit of a wave in there but what I want to do now is I want to bring those curls up a little to meet the bottom of the wave so that it's kind of even on each side, kind of where the curls are. You don't want the curls sitting so high on one side and really low on the other. And once everything's done, give it a big spritz of hairspray. And for these clips, I usually say leave them in until you're done with your makeup and you're pretty much ready to start your day because the longer you can have these in kind of solidifying where that wave is, the better. Once the clips are removed, I just kind of do a final zhuzh. That is our first look. Here's our next style. Once again, these are a more modern take on the classic cat eyes. So we have that subtle cat eye shape. And I must be really into the translucent frame colors because once again, these are a bit of a translucent frame. And this time they are in this stunning blue color that I absolutely love. And the glasses themselves are slightly smaller than the last one. So a little bit more subtle. Um, but because this is kind of a more subtle, modern look, I want to do a hairstyle for this that is more straight on classic vintage. So let's get started. So we're going to be doing a classic half up poodle style and the way I've designed the hairstyles that I'm showing you is actually how you can take a wet set and extend it for a few days so this is going to be perfect for a day or so after your original wet set. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to separate everything from about behind the ear back so this is going to be a piece that's going to be brushed back into its own. I'm just going to clip this up like that for now because that's schmixy. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And honestly, if you're saving this from day to day, I wouldn't even brush through your back combing. I would actually kind of use that to help you save your style from day to day. You just want to kind of minimize the amount of brushing that you're doing through the hair because every time you're going to brush it day after day is um, you're going to start brushing through the curl and you're going to loosen the curl up every day. And then an important thing to note if you're separating during back combing and you get to a point where it doesn't want to let go of it, it itself, don't pull through it. Just take your teasing brush and just kind of lightly brush it 
it will start to separate. And then that way you're going to reduce any type of damage you're doing to your hair. Now, this one, it's really important to be checking your back and sides as you go because anything that is looks weird or zigzaggy is going to be there when your style is done. This is essentially what we want to do with the hair, just a little neater, right? So we're going to be using some booby pins, quite a few of them actually. Uh, there are two different that I'm currently using at the moment. There is the traditional style of booby pin, and then this weird longer, um, the, the little bumps on it are a lot larger, are really good for hair that doesn't like to hold bobby pins. We're gonna take a hair tie. You don't have to do this, this is not mandatory. And I'm just gonna tie the back of the hair. So I know that all this hair that I have here is gonna be going up into the poodle do. So basically I'm taking the teasing brush and I'm lightly brushing the outside of the hair here until it's nice and smooth through probably about half of that hair. And then I'm gonna grab it and then I'm gonna take that hair I'm gonna bring it to the top and position it. I also wanna make sure I'm not like pulling on the hair cause you don't want it all super slick and tight to the head. So I'm gonna kinda of take that hair and then relax it a little bit and then bring those curls towards the front. So now once they're at the front, and then I'm gonna take my booby pin and I'll pin it right where my fingers are holding. Now here's the other trick. Whenever you have kind of like a bobby pin that is your main anchor for your section of hair, don't just put one in, you want to cross them like X's because that will actually lock in the bobby pin in place. Booby pin. We're gonna essentially do the same thing on this side. Now we have our curls. I'm going to softly grab sections of hair, hold it up against my hand, and lightly brush until the curl is nice and smooth. And if you need to, kind of wrap it around your finger. And you can even take a little bit more of your pomade while you're doing this step to kind of smooth out any of the curls. Now for these longer sections of hair that kind of hang here, don't worry about them. We're gonna scrunch them up where they belong in just a little bit. Once your curls are a little bit more tame, now we're going to floof in place. You can see I kind of have this straight area here where there's no real curls. Uh, we don't like that. So essentially what I'm going to start to do is just separate the hair and move the curls in place. And then you're going to take uh, nature's combs, your fingers, <laughs> and you're just going to kind of play with the placement. And then once I have a curl section that is kind of smooth and tamed, if I want to make it curlier, I'm going to take that section and just split it into, say, like two or three sections. So now I have a little bit curlier and then we want to be real cognizant of where we're putting the curls along the front of the hair as well. So I want those to lay in a cute position. And really for the most part, I've only put one bobby pin in so far. So right now, don't stress about getting your bobby pins in because really a lot of that back combing is gonna be kind of what's holding most of it in place and the pinning will come later. And so now I've got it kind of scrunched in the area I like, so I'm just going to take some hairspray. And then again, just kind of run my hands over it and really start to define those curls. You really want to make sure that you're accentuating the poodleness of it all. So you want to make sure that as you're working with the curls, you're really bringing it to the front of the head because if it's spread out too much it's it's not going to have that traditional poodle look to it and again don't forget to spray under the bangs this is a style that's really going to reveal itself the more that you use your fingers and kind of cupping it and shaping it into that poodle style so 
I mean, as you can tell, I really haven't put any bobby pins into this yet. And again, I'm really concentrating the defined curls right along the forehead and leaving kind of the fluffier ones to the top. All right, so I like the way those curls are looking, so I'm gonna release the rest of my hair and just kind of zhuzh it out. And I really like to kind of brush most of the curls to the very bottom. Again, really accentuating the, the poodle style that they were really going with with this. And there we go. We have our very modern cat eye frames with our very traditional 1940s poodle hairstyle. And I'm not going to lie, I love the way this turned out. We're gonna keep you in just a little bit of suspense before we get to the next hair tutorial and a pair of glasses because I wanna take a quick moment to remind you guys that I'm trying very hard this year to reach two goals, one of which is to hit 50,000 subscribers here on YouTube. So if you're not already subscribed, please go ahead and click the subscribe button. And if you click the notification bell, it will always let you know when new videos are posted here on the channel. If you're already subscribed, thank you guys so, so much. I am also trying to get to 10,000 followers over on Instagram, and we are about 100 away. So close. So I will leave a link in the description to my Instagram, and I hope you'll follow me over there as well. For our last frames, we have... You know I love these, right? They are a much more traditional cat eye shape, but what I also love is that the glasses part of it is still fairly large. And especially with having bifocals, it makes it so much easier. And I don't feel like it's closing off my eyes at a certain point. So I love these. They're super classic. So I thought what would be fun for a hairstyle for this is to do, again, a classic hairstyle but then do a little bit of a twist on it. And that is the full, all, all in poodle hairstyle. And again, this is a great hairstyle for those last couple days of a wet set. Now, the traditional poodle is what we've done already, and that is the center of the head. Now, it can sometimes be really hard, especially when you take all the hair up, to wear a center style hairstyle because it relies a lot on symmetry. So it can sometimes look not as flattering. So what I like to do is just set it a little askew. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take out all my booby pins and set them to the side because we're gonna need them. We're gonna take that handy teasing brush again and this time I am basically combing that entire side of my head up and then I just want to come past basically I want the curls to start just past where I normally part my hair and then once I kind of get them in position so once again that side of the head and I want this to be a little loose so again I don't want this to be like super tight to my head I want it to be a little bit looser so I just want to kind of back it up boop, boop. <laughs> so we have a little bit of volume there and honestly for those of you that have a lot of hair that volume is just going to come natural right you're not really going to have to back it up so much but for those of us that our hair is not so full and uh, luscious. We may need a little bit of help with volume. And for this, I really like using the bigger booby pins. They're actually sometimes a little bit hard to get out of my hair. And then I'm just going around the entire head and brushing everything towards the front. And then I'm clipping where I'm holding the hair is where you want to pin in. It's the same technique that we've been using already of kind of um, scooshing. Scooshing? Yeah, that's a word now. Take that hair to the side and really get in there with your fingers, right? That's really where you're going to shape the hair and get it laying where you like it. Now, this one is going to require a little bit more pinning into 
the hair itself. And again, wherever your fingers land when you're scooshing the hair is where you're going to want to booby pin. And I always try, I, again, I always try to make sure like my nicest curls are like front and center and just kind of framing the forehead very nicely. And then again, uh, you're just going to take your hairspray and give it a good spray. And while it's still wet, you just kind of want to form it, mold it. And with this style, it really is all about getting it to sit at the most flattering angle for you. And this is honestly one of my favorite hairstyles to wear flowers with. Just brings the whole look together. This is really one of my go-to looks, especially in the heat and humidity of summer and at the end of a curl set because it just will just stretch out the life of that curl set a little bit longer and it looks heckin' cute. You will have to let me know in the comment section below which hair tutorial was your favorite and also what pair of glasses you liked the best. I wanna say a big thank you again to Firmu for sponsoring this video and you will find the links to the frames featured in this video and to Firmu in the description box below. So be sure to check them out. And of course, before I let you go, a huge subscriber shout out to Mom of Buns. Thank you so, so much for watching, liking, and commenting on my videos and just being a part of our cozy little online community. Now, if you're going to be missing this face between uploads, be sure and follow me on all the social media as a vintage vanity. If you'd like to keep watching my face, go ahead and check out that video you see playing right there. And of course, if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and click on that subscribe button so you're notified when new videos are posted. I hope you have a great day and I will see you soon. Bye.